Hey guys, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Um, today what I'm going to be bringing to you is another unboxing. And um, before I get into opening that up, let me, uh, let me talk about my thought process behind why I wanted to acquire the knife that is inside this uh, packet here. So this is the Emerson catalog. I don't know if you guys have uh, had a chance to pick up the 2018 catalog or any of the other um, previous years of catalog, but I don't know about you guys, I'm a huge fan of catalogs, uh, knife catalogs especially, uh, toy catalogs back in the day, uh, gun catalogs, anything where I can basically browse for badass gear uh, on or off the toilet. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm way into, um, and I find myself actually getting, uh, sold on stuff that I normally wouldn't, wouldn't be into, or, not that I wouldn't be into it, but, you know, a sexy photo will sell me on something a lot better than just sort of, like, checking it out, um, online or, um, things like that. So, a little story, um, the first catalog I got from Emerson was, uh, back in, uh, Oh, I want to say like 2014 or yeah, probably 2014, something like that. And um, the front cover was the uh, the E Tac, and the E Tac was just like it was it was a really great shot, and it totally sold me on um, the beauty of the E Tac. Well, here let's find that E Tac since we're talking about it. That blade just is such a an awesome profile. Like, uh, I believe Emerson calls it a, a trailing tanto, um, but it's just a really, really great, bold, like, wide-looking blade with this nice amount of curve. Um, it looks fast. It looks, like, just gnarly. Um, so I was really very much sold on this E-Tac. It was the front cover of that, uh, that catalog, and... Um, I was especially sold on the, the tan or like desert version of the G10. Um, I think when I do finally get an E-Tac, that's probably what I'll do is pick up one of those tan versions. Um, but what I really liked about it was the blade. The handle, I don't know. Um, maybe you've handled one of these. Uh, maybe you've handled the handle, but I have not handled the handle and it doesn't I'm sure it's ergonomic, um, but it's a little angular for my taste. Um, it's not bad. I'm sure I, it would grow on me if I had one, but it's not It's not my favorite handle here. Um, and, you know, one of the things about Emerson's is that the ergonomics and um, the design of the handle is especially... Uh, that's, that's one of the things that stand out about Emerson knives is that they have great handles. Now the Tiger, this is one where I saw it and I was like, man, I, I love how well that blade sweeps in with the kind of the opposite curve of this handle. This goes together extremely well. And that handle looks really comfortable. It looks like you would have a grip on that thing. There's no way it's gonna get pulled out. Uh, you're not gonna slide forward. You're not gonna get pulled back. It just is an incredibly nice looking handle. It's another one that I'll have to get one of these days. Um, the same handle is shared by, uh, the CQC 13, and that's another one that, um, I probably am going to have to pick up at some point, because I'm a huge fan of the Bowie. I love Bowie blades, um, and again, this handle is enchanting for me. I, I really think that this is going to be a one, it's going to be a handle that I dig. Um, that said, I haven't, uh, haven't tried it out, so we'll see. Um, maybe if I get this in hand and I hate the uh, the ergos, then I won't need this one and the tiger, and, you know. But as it stands, that it's looking kind of kind of like I might end up with a few of these uh, handle variants. But um, yeah, so the, why am I talking about this and talking about the E-Tac? Um, if you're not already aware, uh, this knife that is inside the box inside the envelope is a combination of this blade and this handle. So, I mean, how much more perfect could it really be? I mean, at least in theory, right? 
So, I mean, the true test is picking it up and having it in hand. So, what knife is it that I have in here? Uh, the knife that I have in here is actually the, uh, I believe it's the 15th of the Signature Series. Um, Emerson has been putting out the Signature Series for a few years now. Um, it seems like about three per year. And the, the model that I have here is the Counter-Strike. So, the Counter-Strike combines both, both that blade, the ETAC blade that I like, and also the handle of either the um, CQC 13 or the uh, Tiger. So let's let's open it up and take a peek. Um, before I do though, take a look at um, <laughs> my what I've done. You be the judge whether it, it's a massacre or a, kind of a cool customization, but. I had this uh, CQC-14 and it had the normal serrations um, and it had the normal edge and then I went and uh, sharpened it wanting to put on this real like wide low angle edge and in the process I kind of screwed up these uh, the other serrations so I thought you know what since I'm kind of like already I've made this thing ugly by kind of scratching up the tip here I might as well throw on my own uh, these serrations that there's a there's a technical term for these uh, maybe if one of you guys knows you can throw it into the comments but these serrations I've seen on um, I've seen them on some of the CRKT like on the fossil or um, I think the Carnifex also offers the these kind of larger serrations but um, anyways I figured it would be worth trying and seeing how I like them since I kind of already marred the looks of the other serrations and you know, they, they worked, but I figured this would be kind of fun, especially for unboxing things. I feel like I'll be able to hook into stuff and tear through it. So anyways, that's a little explanation of why this thing looks so weird. So without further ado, let's get into this. Let's see if I can hook with serrations. Yeah, probably damage something that's in there. Um, with this, I'm also getting uh, some, some scales for my CQC-15. Um, I made some custom scales for my CQC-15, and unfortunately, they didn't come out exactly the way I wanted, and uh, I ended up um, I ended up taking them off, but then I misplaced one of the G10 scales, so <laughs> that's kind of a terrifying thing, not being able to reassemble your knife, but anyways, here's the box. It's looking a little worse for wear, but um, not too bad. So this is, as you can see here, Counter-Strike, um, and this is serial number 29. And uh, if if uh, I'm able to release this video when I want, this will be on uh, this will be on the 29th. So there you go. If you, if you were really paying attention, you'd notice that my um, my this guy, my Commander XHD, serial number 18. I posted the video on the 18th, so why not post this on, on Sunday? I only have to wait a few days. I'm shooting this actually on uh, Thursday. But, so anyways, let's get around to this. First impressions on this is, this thing is awesome. This thing, lo it looks super clean. Um, I got this from a buddy of mine, uh, same guy who does the thumb studs. So I don't know if I showed you this, but I'm, I've got the uh, Hornaday 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum um, round on here, which is, which is my pistol. Um, I'm a big fan of the large bore revolvers, but I had uh, my friend make this. I'll, I'll post a link um, to his Instagram in the uh, comments, and you can, you can check him out. He does some amazing thumb discs. Um, so anyways, my first impressions is... I kind of thought this coin was going to be a little bit cheesier than it is, and that's exceptionally well done. Um, this is the first of these uh, signature series where they've lit inlaid this coin, and um, I think that it, this may be the only one that has the um, Bad Intent Skull logo like this. I think the future ones, um, uh, the, the only one that's out right now is the Outlaw. And that one, I think, just has the this kind of like Emerson, um, this Emerson logo with like the two um, acute angles and then the blade in the center. 
So it's kind of cool to have this one with the um, with the bad intent skull. I really like that. And again, it looks better than I'd uh, better than I had hoped. Really, um, yeah, really nice overall. Like immediately, I feel like it has a good weight to it. It's not overly heavy. Um, in a second here, I'll check the weight because um, I do have a scale nearby. So this is a uh, 29 of 62. So 62 other uh, examples of this are out in the wild. Do you possibly have one? Are you going to get one? Maybe? I don't know. Um, if so, uh, what do you think of yours? My initial thoughts on this is this is a badass knife. And that handle, yeah, that is every bit as comfortable as I had hoped. And it is just not going anywhere. Like, that is, that's locked in. The blade is awesome. Really beautiful. What a great line, too. Like, just following all the way to the back of this, it feels like all the force just drives directly behind that point. Um, Ernest Emerson, uh, in his video about this one, kind of actually did it a little different than a lot of his other videos for his signature series or any of his other knives, really. Um, he spoke to, like, you know, what what the reasoning was behind um, naming this the Counter-Strike. And the idea being that um, a counter-punch um, is, like, where when you go to throw a punch, the other opponent, your opponent, um, basically anticipates what you're going to do and then either blocks or um, offsets or disrupts your attack with a counterattack. So as you go to throw a punch, your arm is being pushed to the side or your, being, your own movement is being um, sort of like turned against you and you're getting hit. So um, it's a pretty... I know how I know how um, how an effective how effective a uh, tactic that is to be like striking while the other person is trying to strike you and um, oh there we go yeah it flicks nicely that's the idea with this thing so Ernie was saying that like the counter strike this thing you know he says he knows a counter striker when he sees one and this is a counter strike type knife this is a counter striker. And I can kind of see that, like it does have a, he said, um, you know, he's getting kind of poetic with it. He said it's a, it's like a, a British race car, like it just looks fast standing still. And that like it's, you know, he went as far as to say it's poetry in motion. And uh, I, I do have to agree, it has some really beautiful lines. It's got like a, with this kind of like, sort of upsweep in the back and this sort of like low lower slung blade not quite as low as um, let's say the tiger the tiger is extremely dramatic the tiger is like an s curve this thing is a little bit more driven it seems a little it does have that drop almost like the um, like the oh, what am I thinking of not the bulldog the um, uh, the chopper the whatever it is the one that he talks about looking like a motorcycle um, but yeah, damn, it's a nice look. It's a great, great look, really. Yeah, so cool. So here's Ernie's signature here. Apparently, hand signs all of these. Uh, that's, that's what I've been led to believe. I don't know at what point the camera's going to pick it up, because the camera's above me. I can't see it. If things go out of focus, I'm sorry. Um, I can't tell when they're in focus or when they're not in focus, because... I'm down here playing with a knife. Uh, centering is, yep, pretty dead on. That's cool. Cool. Well, I love this knife. I'm glad that I got this. This was, um, this was actually a trade for that um, CQC, no, not the CQC, the, uh, yeah, the CQC 7 Karambit. So this as well as those scales, um, and he's also making me a few more thumb discs, so 
uh, yeah, I think I think it was a good trade. I think that honestly, there being only 62 of these, I feel pretty lucky. Like I think that um, this is a great combination. Like for a fan of this handle and a fan of this blade, you really couldn't ask for anything more. So um, let me give you a couple specs on it, since we're um, since we're just sitting here admiring it. Um, the blade length is 3.8 inches. Uh, the handle is 5.2, and the overall length is 9 inches. Man, that's so cool. All right, let's let's put it on the scale and see what it weighs. Uh, 173 grams so I'm not sure what that is in uh, ounces but you can surely google it and uh, it's not it's not hard information to find it feels like a good weight to me I mean it's um you know obviously lighter than this guy um, <laughs> it's Okay, so this guy is lighter than this, but this is definitely a lot heavier than this. So it's, you know, it's somewhere in between these guys. You know, these are standard points of reference. I'm sure every one of you has one of these and one of these, and you can go, oh, okay, it's somewhere in between. I'm sure it's close to, um, let's see, do I have any other? Let's, let's pop into the Pelican real quick. Compare it to Black Shamrock Knife. Oh, that's another one that no one has. Um, 168 on this guy. Uh, oh, Sheepdog. That's a good one. 155. So it's a little heavier than a Sheepdog. It's close to this guy. Let's compare these just because it's always fun to have multiple blades in the on the table at one time, right? Yeah, that makes sense, this being a smaller blade. Handle-wise, these are... These guys are fairly similar. This guy's a little smaller. Let's put this one out as well, because why not? I'll do a... Um, an additional video on this guy now that I've had him out for a little while. I gotta say guys, this thing is just, it is just so damn nice. And wearing the extra large um, pivot now, or not pivot, uh, thumb stud, it's just like, it's perfect for it. I can't believe that it ever shipped with a, the, you know, the standard size small little thumb disc. Like you really do kind of want something like this. It just, it looks appropriate. But yeah, I've showed this uh, to my dad, and it's like, you know, dad's, uh, he's a knife appreciator as well, and um, I've given him uh, some some pretty cool, like he's, the one that he's kind of rocking as like his favorite is like the Benchmade Nakamura. And so you can see a, a slightly smaller knife, and but he really liked the action on the Nakamura. That was his first um, axis lock. But I gave this to him, uh, I was like, hey, well, try out that flipper. And um, he hit that thing and it was just like, you could see, like it, it connected for him. And he's telling me like, man, yeah, this is nice. I mean, a little heavy for me, a little large, this and that, but ooh, man, that'll make you a believer. And it's like, yes, it will. <laughs> it's It's been a lot of fun to play with, let's just say that. So, okay, I mean, I'm assuming this is exactly the same size handle as like your standard commander. It's the same size as, as this guy here. But yeah, that's a that's a nice little set of blades there. I'm quite happy. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot more to say about this, except, um, yeah, the uh, Emerson Signature Series Counter-Strike, number 29. Um, I hope you guys get a chance to handle one of these one day. Because I gotta say, this is, you know, again, I've seen the Signature Series is usually pretty cool. Um, there are some that 
uh, are more inspiring than others. Um, I'm not going to talk shit on stuff like the uh, Outlaw, but, you know, that's like a good example of one where I'm like, now what exactly is the difference between this Outlaw and uh, an Aftershock? I, I, I know there are some slight differences, but boy, it is, I mean, you're, you're getting down to, you're picking fly shit out of pepper. I mean, it's not a lot. This thing, though, this is, you know, albeit a bit of an, an amalgamation of two other knives, but two other knives that I really loved, and it's the two parts of those knives that I liked most, the handle and the blade. So this is a huge win for me. And then the fact that this coin, again, I don't think that it's going in future um, signature series. That's cool. That's a really sweet little, um, it's a sweet little exclusive there. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, check back soon. Uh, there's always going to be more things for me to share with you. Uh, I got, uh, you know, obviously a lot more um, Emersons I'd like to show you guys. And, um, you know, not only Emersons. I've, I've got some, some ZTs, some Spydercos, um, even stuff like, uh, let's see here my my trusty uh victorinox uh compact which is always just a you know little custom uh blue and red here so i'd like to do that i've got a mechanic i've got a couple other um victorinox that i'd like to show you as well as well as some cold steels a uh, huge fan of the cold steels but anyways have a great day guys see you later